Good afternoon. I'm Chan Verbeck. I'm a senior manager in, at, with uh, the group of people who help Tableau's developers help you see and understand your data. And today I get the pleasure of introducing an outstanding Zen master, Joshua Milligan. Uh, he's, he's published books on Tableau, like Learning Tableau 10, and he's known for, well, he's written, he writes tips and tricks posts to help people learn Tableau. Um, he also creates beautiful and compelling dashboards and vis vises, but more importantly, understandable vises. He, and lately, he's been focusing on Tableau prep. Uh, his recent blog posts include how to see and understand what data robots machine learning is doing as it makes its decisions, how to show curved flight paths in, in Tableau, and lots of advice on prep. Removing du duplicate records, he's got that nailed. No rank function, he solved that one. Uh, new input files, same flow, yep, he can take care of it. He tells you how to take care of that too. Um, and somehow, through the sleep deprivation of having a new five-week-old daughter, he's here to help us learn. You know, we use Tableau to help, to help us understand how t Tableau developers are using the engineering systems and tools that we use. We have services and tools from different companies. We build some of our own stuff and jam it in databases that, you know, sometimes the data is good, sometimes the data is bad. So we have some of our own data monsters. And so there, so I'm excited to learn, uh, to, hear, to hear Joshua talk about how to train your data dragons learning and leveraging Tableau prep to tame even the most challenging data. So please join me in welcoming Joshua Milligan. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, uh, that wonderful introduction. We are going to learn how to tame data dragons using Tableau prep. Uh, I am loving Tableau Prep. I've been using it ever since it was released in alpha and beta and uh, working with some of the developers to understand how it works. The paradigm, which you'll see, is amazing. It's that same Tableau hands-on feel where you're dragging and dropping and you're, uh, you're seeing the data take shape right in front of you. It's that instant feedback that you get with Tableau Desktop when you build a visualization. Now you get it as you uh, shape and cleanse your data. So we're going to take a look at that. Uh, I already had a wonderful introduction, so we'll go through this really quickly. I am a principal consultant at Technion Data Solutions. Uh, Technion is a gold partner with Tableau and has been for many years. Uh, so I love the fact that uh, in my day-to-day -day job, I get to work with clients using Tableau uh, and Tableau Prep to solve their data problems and help them see and understand and make decisions with their data. Uh, I am a blogger at vizpainter.com, so check that out. I will uh, also uh, have a post or two covering some of the material that we'll have here, and you can uh, reach out to me at Twitter as well. I am humbled to be a Tableau Zen master, so I, I was on stage this morning along with uh, the uh, Tableau developers who are the true uh, stars uh, of, of Tableau, so I'm, I'm loving that. I am the author of uh, Learning Tableau, which is uh, currently in its second edition, and I'm working on a third, so excited about that. And uh, I am the father of four children, including uh, our new daughter who was born just last month. Uh, not pictured is my wonderful wife, who was very gracious to allow me to come here uh, and get some sleep. <laughs> So what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to uh, take a look at, uh, at some data dragons, but we're going to start by looking at some of the tools that Tableau Prep gives us to deal with them. Uh, then we're going to meet some data dragons, and many of you have already met these with your data as you've uh, worked with it, uh, but we'll get to know them a little bit better, and uh, as we do, we'll learn how to train them and get them into shape so that we can actually work with the data. Now, we are going to go fast. So, uh, so get ready for that. I know this session was labeled new to Tableau, which is great if you're, if you're just beginning. We'll start with, uh, with the foundation, but we're going to move fast. Uh, and don't let that bother you. If you don't catch everything, it's going to be recorded, and I will uh, uh, post some, uh, some things on the blog uh, with everything here. So here we go. 
Let's start by looking at some of the tools that Tableau Prep gives us to uh, deal uh, with data dragons. Tool number one is the union. And the idea is that I have multiple sets of data. They might be different tables, they might be different files, and, uh, and they usually are going to be a similar structure, have similar columns. They don't always have to be exactly the same, but hopefully they're pretty close because the idea is, is that I want to take all of those and union them together where I'm going to uh, stack those rows on top of each other. And then I may also get some additional uh, data we'll see in Tableau Prep that it will actually give me table names and sheet names uh, as, as we start to uh, union that out. In Tableau Prep, what that's going to look like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like that a couple different ways. First of all, when we start out with a data source, we have the option of unioning things together. So if, I'm, if I have files, I can, uh, I can say that that data source is unioned together with multiple files. I can give it a wildcard match of, of some kind. Uh, same thing with a database. I can, I can now wildcard match those tables together. Uh, oftentimes, it's going to uh, maybe look something like this, where I'm dragging and dropping, uh, drag and drop. Uh, so I'm dragging and dropping in the interface, and I'm building out uh, that union just, just by dragging and dropping different parts of the flow, and we'll see how that works. Tool number two, the join. So here, I have two separate tables. And I want to bring those together, but it's not, not in the same way as a union. What I want to do is I want to match records from one to records in the other, and I, I want to see where I have matches. Depending on how I set up that union, uh, here I'm going to match on order ID. And uh, one possibility is, is that I match everything from one table, and where I don't get matches, I'm going to end up with null values. Uh, so that's one possibility. Another possibility is that I'll keep only the records that match. And so we'll see, uh, we'll see how that works in Tableau Prep. It's, again, it's going to be a lot of uh, uh, dragging and dropping, and then, and then a nice user interface to show us uh, and give us options on how we want to set up that join. So that's the second tool. Tool number three is the pivot. Here I have a table of, uh, of different animals that dragons have, uh, have eaten. Uh, as we think about training dragons, we will not be able to change their eating habits. It's disgusting, I know, but it's what we have to work with. Uh, fortunately, we can fix the data. Uh, and, and you might look at this and say, what's wrong with the data? Well, we'll see that uh, this kind of a data set, which is a wide data set, is hard to work with. And what makes it wide? Well, the fact that each one of those values there is really the same measure. It's animals eaten but it's broken up over multiple columns, and that's going to make it really hard to do analysis in Tableau. So what I would like to do is take that one measure and turn it into one column. Uh, so here you'll see number eaten, and then the column names uh, in some form are going to give it me a dimension value. So here you can see it's the, uh, the animal type uh, that becomes that dimension. So pivot is going, to be, is going to be a crucial tool as we think about training dragons. In Tableau Prep, uh, you'll see it's a, uh, it's a tool that we can add, and then, uh, and then we'll just set it up by selecting the columns we want to pivot. We can rename uh, the fields as needed, and, uh, and we'll take a look at that in more detail. But, uh, but you'll see it's, it's all very visual. It's, it's all just an interface that works really well. Tool number four is aggregation. So here, uh, I might even start with that, uh, that same table that we just had, and I've got, uh, I've got the dragons, I've got the animals, and the, and the number eaten, and I might think about how could I roll that up and, uh, and aggregate it. So I've got several different possibilities. One is that I could say, how many animals eaten per dragon? Uh, how many were eaten per type of animal? Or I might even just say how many, uh, how many animals were eaten altogether. And that's just taking that, uh, that number eaten and summing it up uh, and grouping it by these different uh, values. Uh, it doesn't have to be a sum. It could be a min or a max or an average. So I could say the average number of animals eaten per dragon. 
Uh, so we, we could look at that different ways, but that's a key tool as well. Where Tableau Prep really shines is that it gives us all of these tools. Oh, well, yeah, here, here's how we do the aggregation. So you can see it's just adding the aggregation, telling it how to group it. So here, per dragon, how many were eaten, and we'll see, it's, it's just that easy. But here's where it really shines, is when we can take all of these tools and we combine them together. So we take our unions and our joins and our pivots and our aggregations, and we put them together. And Tableau Prep gives us a lot of other little tools as well, calculations and filtering and grouping and cleaning, and we'll see some of these options as well. And I can put all of these together into a flow of data that works really well, so, uh, so we'll do that. And with that, who's ready to, oh yeah, here's, here's what it looks like in, uh, in Tableau Prep, so I'm building out this flow of data, and you can see I'm, I'm just doing all kinds of things, pivoting and joining, and, uh, and then I can, I can do another union on top of that, so, so we'll see how this works. I can do all kinds of fun things in Tableau Prep. Who's ready to tame some dragons? All right. And with that, we will uh, we'll get out of PowerPoint, because who likes that when we have Tableau? Now, I know you said, you said I came here to see Tableau prep, but let's start with Tableau, because this is what's going to happen. As you, uh, as you work with your data, you're going to start to meet some data dragons. Data dragon number one is what I like to call the small and cute but messy Data Dragon. This could be an Excel document. Uh, it might be a series of text files. Uh, it's, not, it's not a huge amount of data, or maybe it is, but it can be a mess. It might look something like this. This is a nice, cute data set. Uh, just a, a, a record uh, with dragons, when they were observed, uh, the date and the, the time of day, uh, the activity. Uh, and, then, and then maybe a length of observation. But you'll notice some things about this data set. Uh, the, the, the observed is just a text field. So if I look at, uh, at observed, it's just text. It's not a date. Uh, the length of observation breaks it down by hours and minutes. Uh, and, and it looks like there might be some really interesting data here. But if I start to try to work with this in Tableau, there's not a lot I'm going to be able to do with it. If I wanted to look at, you know, how many dragons did we observe over time? Well, I've got my observed field here, uh, and it kind of puts it in order, but, uh, but it's kind of a mess, too. And I can say, well, how many dragons? Yeah, I, can get, I can get a visualization. It kind of works. But, uh, but it's, not, it's not a time series, so I'm going to miss any gaps in the, in the dates. Uh, if I wanted to take a look at, you know, which dragon did I observe the longest? So here's my list of dragons, and here's my length of observation. Well, that doesn't even, I can't even build a bar chart based on that. So this, this data really needs some help. Plus, it's a small data set, and sometimes, sometimes your data's too small, and you want to help that little dragon grow up and become a big dragon that's more useful, and so you want to add data to it. So let's take a look in Tableau Prep. Here's what Tableau Prep looks like. I've already got a connection to the data, uh, so I just built that out. If, I, uh, if you look at the list of connections, you'll see it looks a lot like Tableau. I can add files. I can add server data sources. Uh, so I've already added my Excel file here, cute but messy. And a lot of times what I like to do is just start by adding a step because that's going to let me see my data. Now, Tableau Prep is amazing, because up here at the top, I have a flow pane. This is where I'm building out uh, all, of my, all of my data flow. I'm going to do all my unions and joins and aggregations here. Uh, but then for each step, I can take a look at the data in the pane just below it, what's called the profile pane. And this pane is amazing because it allows me to start to discover my data. And I'm going to see uh, how many records do I have for each dragon. And as I click, it's going to do some brushing and show me the related values, which is really pretty cool. So I can start to look at that. And it's going to give me some ability to do some cleaning as well. 
So one thing I had noticed in Tableau was that, uh, was that the observed field was not a date. It, uh, it didn't let me do what I might want to do with a date uh, in Tableau. So I want, to, uh, I want to fix that. And Tableau Prep gives me lots of options. Uh, I could create a calculation. I could potentially come down here and, uh, and look at my options for, uh, for cleaning it up and removing uh, letters and uh, punctuation and getting down to, uh, to maybe some, some numeric values there. I could split it out. I notice that I've got a, a, a space between the date and, the, uh, and then the time of day. Uh, so that's a possibility. Uh, and we'll see some of those options, but it turns out it's a really easy fix here. All I need to do is just change the data type from a string to a date. And as long as I don't care about keeping that time of day, uh, then Tableau Prep has, has changed it to a nice date for me and, uh, and allows me to continue working with it. Another thing that, uh, that I struggled with in Tableau was this length of observation. It's pretty, it's useful data, but it's pretty useless in the format where it exists now. Uh, I, I can't easily use that to measure anything. So here, what I might do is think about splitting that out. Again, I see a space there, so I'll just go to split, and I'll try an automatic split. Uh, Tableau Prep takes that and splits that out uh, into split number one, split number two, and if I do some checking, uh, what I see is that when I, uh, when I highlight uh, two hours and zero minutes, it does show me, in fact, two and zero here. So I've got my, my hours in a, in a new field, I've got my minutes in another field, and now I can say, well, this length of observation, I don't need it anymore, in fact, I'll remove it. So Tableau Prep is allowing me just to, uh, just to continue to work with this and flow with it. And then I think, you know, what would be great is, uh, let's rename this first of all, so, so this is ours. I'll just double click each, each field name that I want to rename and just type, this is minutes. But it would be great if I had a, just a single field that kind of brought those two together. So I could, uh, I could create a calculated field. And if you're used to creating calculations in Tableau, it's, uh, it's the same syntax, same calculations and uh, functions that are available. Uh, here, let's, uh, let's do minutes of observation. And minutes is, uh, is hours times 60 plus uh, minutes. Now, Tableau Prep indicates that I've got a problem here. It doesn't like something, so I'll take a look at what's wrong. It doesn't like it because it says you're trying to multiply a string and an integer together. So 60 is my integer, hours is my string, and sure enough, when I look back at the field, uh, it's marked as a string. So when I did that split, it, it, uh, it split it out nicely, but it didn't change the data type. Well, that's okay, I'll, uh, I'll save my calculation, and you'll see it, uh, it keeps the field, but it's, it's marked as, uh, as invalid, at least for now. And I'll come over here, and uh, the fix, I think, is going to be to uh, change the data type. So we'll change these to numeric, and they're, they're all whole numbers, so I'll, I'll keep it as a number whole. So I've, I've fixed that, but it still says my calculation is invalid. Why? Because Tableau Prep is keeping track of the order in which I made these changes. Notice this change pane. I can open and close here. And I did those uh, those data change types after I did my calculation. Notice also that each time I, I click on a change, it shows me my data as it existed at that change. But it also lets me do a reordering of changes, so I can take that uh, calculated field, drag it down here to the bottom, and now it works fine because, because it, uh, it now takes hours and minutes and it's numeric and it works perfectly well. So that works, and now I no longer need my hours and minutes fields. I'll just uh, I'll remove those. And now I've got a fairly good data set here where I can see each dragon, uh, the date that they were observed, the minutes of observation, uh, and, and the observed activity. So this looks like a pretty good data set, but again, it's a small data set, and I want to help this dragon grow up just a bit 
So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to add to it. I'm going to uh, add a connection or to, uh, to a new data source here. I'm going to add an Excel file. And uh, if I look at my data sources, I have some details about each dragon. Uh, and as with a lot of Excel files, uh, it's, it's a couple of different subtables. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see how we have to deal with that. But I do have an email address for each dragon. Uh, please pay attention to the note. The domain names are fictitious. If you go there and get malware on your machine, please don't. Now, some of the Homestar Runner, that one's OK. Uh, vizpainter.com is OK. But the, I, lonelymountain.com, I have no idea. Don't, don't go there. Uh, <laughs> so I'll add that data source. And notice I get a new connection. I get a list of, uh, of tables, and since there was only one sheet, Tableau Prep has brought that in. But as I look at it, uh, I notice that, uh, that it got the drag and it got the email. It did not get the standing and community field. It got some F3 field, and that's because of those subtables. So just like in Tableau, if you've ever used the data interpreter, you'll be glad to know that it is also here in Tableau Prep. So I can check Use Data Interpreter. And notice that now Tableau Prep has picked up those subtables. So I will remove this uh, input step and add these subtables. So here's subtable number one, which has my dragon and my email. I'll add subtable number two, which has my dragon and my standing and community. And at this point, uh, I need to think about how I want to bring those together with my main data source. Well, I don't want to union them together. It's not that I want more rows. I just want to match up the dragons in my, in my original data source and get the additional data. So I'm going to choose a join. So I'm going to drag and just drop on join. And Tableau Prep allows me to decide how do I want to join these things together. And it gives me a really nice interface for doing this. It's already found a field that has the same name and data type in both parts of the flow, so it's picked that. Uh, so it says where dragon equals dragon. An inner join probably works well, but I can decide if I want that to be left or right or full outer or, or anything like that. And it also gives me the ability to look here and see how many fields that I have from each part of the flow. So from my blue clean step and from my uh, yellowish uh, dragon detail step, how many fields, how many fields found a match, how many uh, did not find a match, and I can even click on that and see which one it is. Uh, or uh, I can go back and take a look at, uh, at all of them Take a look there. Uh, and I can also very quickly find out which values didn't find a match because they're color-coded here. And I notice another issue with my data. Uh, Elliot has a misspelling. So I can fix that right here. Just double-click and uh, fix the spelling. And now all 13 of my dragons find a match, or all 13 records for my dragons find a match. So I've fixed that, and now I'm ready to, uh, to move on. I might even just uh, join that right here. So I can join to a join, no problem. Once again, it finds a, finds a match on Dragon and tells me that Smog doesn't find a match and Smug doesn't find a match. Well, Smog may be Smug, but, uh, but that's a misspelling. So we'll come over here and fix it on this side. And now we have all of our records matching, and that works really well. So I like to then add another, another step just to look at things. Uh, I notice that maybe I get another uh, couple of fields here that are extra from, from the join. So I get a dragon one and a dragon two fields. Uh, those came from my details, so I'll just remove those. I don't need them. Uh, but now I have a nice data set that gives me a dragon, the observation data, plus an email, plus the standing and community. And at this point, I'm ready to go back to Tableau. Now, now, Tableau Prep allows me to, at any point, I can right-click a step, and I can just say Preview in Tableau Desktop, and it'll open it up uh, right there as it exists. I could even go back to, uh, to this Join and take a look at that data set in Tableau Desktop. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to actually go all the way through to an output, 
uh, and write a file. Uh, I could also publish to, uh, to Tableau Server if I wanted to, but I'm going to save it to a file. I have several options. I have uh, hyper extract by default, uh, the old style Tableau data extract, uh, or a CSV file. And today I'm going to use CSV files because here's a little, a little tip. As, as great as hyper is, and I love it, uh, if you have it open in Tableau Desktop uh, and then you try to write to it with Tableau Prep, it's going to fail. It's going to say, eh, that's locked in the hyper engine, you can't do it. But CSV, you can have that open in Tableau Desktop and you can write to it with Tableau Prep so you can go back and forth all day long and it works really well. I'm going to browse. Uh, let's find that data set here. This will be my cute and clean data set. We'll replace it. Run the flow. It'll ask me if I want to replace it again. I say yes. It runs the flow, writes the file. And now I can go back to Tableau. And let's take a look at that new data set, that cute and clean data set, which I will uh, I'll refresh just to make sure we've got it. And uh, now I can, I can do everything I wanted. I've got the observed field here. I can use it as a date. So if I right click, drag and drop, I get all of my date options. I'm going to look at that just as a, a date value uh, continuously. And already, I'm starting to see more than I saw before. I see some gaps in time, uh, a mark for each date. If I want to see how many dragons did I observe on each date, I can look at the number of, of records uh, or how many, how many observations. I can change the uh, mark type. So we'll look at that as, as bars. Maybe fix the bar size there. And finally, I might say, well, what was the standing and community for the dragons that we observed? I'll put that on color, and I can start to see, was it a good dragon or a bad dragon that I was, that I was watching? And uh, notice that, uh, that gap in time, but we started to see dragons again. So that's the first type of data dragon that you can, uh, you can address with Tableau, uh, Tableau prep. The second kind is the stubborn data dragon. So here, the data set may be clean, it, it may look good. Uh, in fact, it may be somewhat useful, but then you'll run into some issues. So for example, here's a data set of dragons that have gone to the hospital. So I've got, uh, I've got different dragons with different diagnoses. Uh, and then I've got some dates, the dates that they were admitted, the dates that they were discharged. And this is a, this is a fine way to store this data. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this data structure. Uh, everything that should be a date is a date. Uh, everything else that should be strings or strings. So, I mean, there's, it's all clean, it's good, and it's even useful for some types of analysis. So, for example, if, I, if my question was, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, at the dragons and, and just see when they were in the hospital. So when they were in the hospital, that's pretty easy. I'll take my, uh, my date admitted and put that one up here on columns and do a continuous date. So now I get a mark of when they were admitted. Uh, I do have to supply a calculation here just to get the length of stay, but that's, a, that's an easy calculation in, in Tableau. It's just the date difference in days between the, uh, the date admitted and the date discharged. And so I can put that onto my size and get a nice Gantt chart. Uh, so this data set has worked really well for this type of analysis. But then someone's going to ask me, well, how many dragons were in the hospital on any given day? So for example, September 5th, how many dragons were in the hospital? And I said, well, that's not too hard to figure out. I'll just, uh, I'll just take my, my mouse and draw a rectangle up on September 5th. There were two. And then they'll say, how about September 15th? And I'll say, well, um, let's see. Oh, it's even hard to get there. So I might drag a rectangle starting up here. So, so maybe, maybe seven. And they'll say, yeah, but couldn't you just show that as a time series? Just, just draw a line. And I'll say, okay, yeah, I, I can do that in Tableau, sure. Let's, uh, let's start a new view. How many, how many dragons were in the hospital over time? So I just take my date, and as soon as I say that, I say, uh-oh, I've got a problem, because which date do I use? If I use date admitted, and I take a look at, uh, at my number of records, 
Now what I'm seeing is not how many dragons were in the hospital at any given time, but how many dragons were admitted into the hospital on that date. Uh, same thing with date discharged. I could use that one, but then that's how many dragons were discharged. Uh, I might be able to do some really crazy things in Tableau using some uh, table calculations and data densification and all those crazy things to finally get to the answer. But wouldn't it be better if I could just reshape the data? So I go into Tableau Prep. And I say I've got my dragons, uh, the admi admitted and discharged dates, uh, just like we were looking at. And I want to think about what could I do? What kind of shape of data would allow me to know how many dragons were in the hospital on any given day? I, I have some, some thoughts. I mean, one thing that comes to mind is maybe I could pivot those dates so I have a single, single date field. But that's just going to give me two dates per dragon, the date that they were admitted, the date that they were discharged. If I had a lot of events, that would be a great option uh, for, for keeping track of all of the different events. We could do a pivot. But here, what I want to do is I want to actually uh, have a record for every day and then count out how many, how many dragons were in there on that date. So I've got, uh, got my Excel file here. And what I've done in my Excel file is I have added another sheet uh, for a calendar. And if you looked at the Excel file, all I've done is I've just added the date, and it was actually pretty easy to do in Excel. You just put in the first date, the second date, and then just drag it down, and it'll fill it in. And if I look at that, it is just a record for every date, uh, starting, starting in September and ending at the end of October. And in fact, notice here in Tableau Prep, it's kind of summarizing those dates. But if I switch that to a detail view, it's just one record, one row per date, starting uh, September 1st and going to the end of October. And so what I can do with that now is I can take my dragons and I can join that in onto that structure. So I have, uh, have every date, and I'll just do a join. Here, uh, Tableau Prep did not find a field to do a match. So I need, to, uh, I need to tell it, how do we want to join this? And what I want to do is I want to uh, join where the date on my calendar is greater than or equal to the date that the dragon was admitted. And I'm going to add another, uh, another condition to that, that the date also has to be less than the date that the dragon was discharged. And what that will give me is that will give me a match uh, for every dragon for every day that they were in the hospital, from the time that they were admitted to the time that they were discharged. And I'll verify that that's true a little bit later in the flow. I'll take a look and I'll see that September 1st got excluded. That's fine. Apparently, our first admission was September 2nd. So I'm going to lose a date there, but that's not a problem. I'm going to also lose some dates in October because it looks like our last discharge was October 5th. So again, not a problem. Notice that I'm getting a lot more uh, resulting records than I had in either of my two original, uh, original data sources. That's fine. I expect that. Let's just verify that I'm getting really what I want, though. So let's add a step and take a look at the profile pane. Uh, let's take a, just a single dragon uh, and take a look at, uh, at how the data looks. So admitted uh, September 10th, discharged October 3rd. Notice that if I look at my date fields, I get, I get a highlighting starting September 10th and every date up until October 2nd, so I chose uh, to do my analysis assuming that the date discharged, we won't count that one. Uh, you'll have to decide if that's the way you want to do it or not, but that's because in my join I did a less than instead of a less than or equals to. And I could do some other checks on the data here. Uh, Falcor uh, just spent one day in the hospital, so I should only see one record highlighted here in my dates, and I do. And so I'm going to output this again to a CSV file. We'll, uh, we'll select something here. So we'll do our stubborn no more.csv. We'll replace that one 
run the flow, we'll say replace, go back to Tableau. And now with my, uh, with my new data set, my stubborn no more, we'll refresh that and just make sure we've got it fresh. Uh, notice I still have my, my admit and discharge date, but now I have a, just a generic date field that includes every event. And so I'll use that one. And how many dragons? Well, it turns out that as long as I'm looking at it per date, it's just the number of records. And so I can take a look at how many dragons were in the hospital, and I can decide exactly how I might want to look at that. Here, a, a, a stepped line works really well. Uh, a traditional line chart might be kind of cool, or even uh, an area chart might be kind of an interesting way to look at that. But now I've got a data set that I can use for this kind of analysis and a data set that I could use for the other kind. Uh, and Tableau Prep makes it easy to switch back and forth. Sometimes your dragons uh, won't just be stubborn, but they will be so twisted that there's not much you can do with them at all, and you'll have to, uh, you'll have to really untwist that data before you can do anything. So for example, you might have data that looks something like this. Here we have just a list of countries and uh, dragon sightings, except that, uh, that here we've got blue dragon sightings, and we've got some merged fields there in Excel, and orange dragon sightings. And for each are blue and are orange, we have that broken up further by year. Now we saw this uh, kind of in that introduction where we talked about the wide data set, and we talked about how uh, in reality, we're looking at just one measure here. Uh, all of these are just measuring dragon sightings, uh, but, uh, but then it's broken up over multiple columns. And that is a major problem uh, when we try to do anything with that in Tableau. Because my data set is going to look something like this. It's going to be very twisted. And you'll notice I have a lot of fields listed for measures, when in reality, that's just one field. And if I started to try to use that, if I said, well, let's just see how many dragon sightings we have, uh, well, I could start with one of these. And I could say, well, blue dragon sightings in 2014, I've got five. Uh, Tableau does give me some, some tools to work with. I could drag and drop the next measure and put it in the same spot and use measure names and measure values. So I can start to, uh, to see some things here, and I could, I could even get all of these uh, blue dragon sighting fields and put it on measure values. So I can, I can work with it a little bit, but this is about the extent to which I'm going to be able to do anything. Because then somebody's going to say, well, show me the orange dragon sightings. And as soon as I bring in the orange dragon, notice it just adds it there to the end. Uh, even though that's 2014 and, and uh, this is 2014 over here, I don't have any control over, I mean, I guess I could, could move it around, but that really is just painful. And uh, so I'll take it off. And, and yeah, I can change the, uh, uh, the viz type, maybe a line chart, but I don't have too many other options. And somebody's going to say, well, what's the trend? I can see it's increasing, but what is it? And normally I'd say, well, in Tableau, we'll just turn on the trend lines. But Tableau says, no, not if you're using measure names and measure values. You can't have trend lines. So this data set is really not going to be too useful the way it is. I need to, uh, I need to untwist it. So let's go to uh, Tableau Prep, and here it is, all twisted up, just the way we saw it. In fact, it's worse than twisted up. Take a look at this. I'm getting all these uh, F3, F4, F5, blue dragon sightings. So, so it's, already, it's already a mess. Well, the reason is, is that we've got all those merged fields and, and things in Excel. So let's see if the data interpreter helps us. It definitely helps some. It cleans up the column names, it figures out a few things, and it gives me uh, blue dragons and orange dragons. So now we're kind of back to where it was in Tableau, which I had used the data interpreter there too. Uh, but I need, to, I need to get all of these columns and turn them into rows. So what's the tool I can do to use to, uh, to turn columns into rows? 
Pivot, yeah, I heard it. So I'm going to pivot. But I'm not going to do just any pivot because I have a couple of sets of columns that I need to turn into rows. I've got blue columns, and so I'll, uh, I'll start with those. Notice I can select all of them. Oops, I need to make sure I get all of them. So click the first one, hold down on Shift, and get all of them. Move it over here to the pivot. And that works out really well. Uh, Tableau Prep. Uh, automatically picks up the name for this field as Blue Dragon Sightings. And if I look over here in the data, uh, it's giving me the value. And then it, uh, it has picked up the names, and it's given me the years. So I'm going to even just rename that field to year. Uh, and then I can do in Tableau Prep what's called a coordinated pivot. So I can add a new section of columns. And I'll do the same thing with all of my orange. So I didn't, I didn't do them all at once because I want, I want them to match up with the, with the proper year, kind of like we saw there in Tableau. Uh, I, need, I need blue and, drag, and orange for uh, 2014 and 2015. So I can, I can keep doing that as much as I want, just keep, uh, keep adding sets of columns. And notice now, when I take a look at, uh, at my next step, I now have just a couple of different uh, measures. I have orange dragon sightings, and I have blue dragon sightings, and, uh, and each year uh, will give me some of each. So that's, that's working out pretty well. Uh, but if I, if I stop for a minute and just think about it, I realize that these two things are still really the same measure. It's still really just dragon sightings, and blue or orange is really just a dimension that tells me about the measure. So I'll take, uh, I'll take those two fields, and let's do another pivot. So this is the, this is the beautiful thing of Tableau Prep. Uh, in Tableau, you think, oh, I've got a pivot uh, there in the data connection screen. But you can't do it twice. Uh, so I can do another pivot. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll take my blue dragon sightings and my orange dragon sightings and put those in pivot values. And now. Uh, Tableau Prep has given me a new name, Dragon Sightings, that it picked up from the, from the fields. And now I've got my dragon color as my, as my dimension. And now I've got a really nice uh, data set here. Uh, the only other thing I might do is I might take this year, and I realize that's a string. So I might do something with it, maybe turn it into a date. Uh, or I could do just an integer of some kind. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll keep that, and everything else is looking pretty good. And we'll, uh, we'll add the final output, do a CSV, and this will be our untwisted data set. So we'll do that, run the flow, replace the file, and come back to Tableau. When we go to look at it in an untwisted way, Notice now that I have just one measure that gives me dragon sightings. I can look at that year by year. And I can take that new, uh, new color dimension, put that on color, and, uh, and split it up really nicely. I don't have to use measure names, measure values. And if I want trend lines, it's as easy as showing those trend lines. And Tableau doesn't complain one bit. So it is totally untwisted, not a problem anymore. We've tamed that dragon. Sometimes, though, you'll have dragons that are hideous monsters. Sometimes you'll have things where you have to deal with all kinds of issues going on at once. Or another possibility is, is that you might have a, uh, a very complex question that you want to answer. And so you need to take your different data sources and bring them together in order to allow you to answer that kind of a question. So totally made up kind of a, kind of a question here, uh, but a little bit complex. Let's start by thinking of the, uh, the Superstore sample data set that ships with Tableau. How many of you have used the Superstore sample data set? Good, a fair number of you. So 
So it's got sales for this fictitious chain of, uh, of stores. And what I'm looking at here is just my sales per city and then noticing that those cities occur in different regions. And I've got four different regions uh, of the United States. Uh, and my, my really kind of made up question is, could we draw a map that would show where some of you came from to get here today? And could we take that Superstore data set and per region show not only just the cities that you came from, but show which city in that region had the highest sales? Let's think about if we can do that. Let's start with just creating that data set. Now, I've already got it started here uh, because I've got, uh, I've got a city and state and, uh, and that's where the, the, for the origin and then New Orleans will be, will be the destination for everyone. I came today from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, so I've already got that one. But go ahead and shout out just a few uh, cities and states that, uh, that you guys came from. San Jose, California. Orlando, Florida. Portland, Oregon. Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip Washington D.C. <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> we'll we'll do that, Washington. Dallas, Texas, San Diego, Las, Las Vegas, Boston, is it MA? Charlotte. All right, let's, uh, let's take that and uh, let's take our destination and just copy that down and we'll, uh, we'll save that data set there. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to go to Tableau Prep. And I have a flow that I've already created, uh, just for the sake of time. But I have here our, uh, our trips. And uh, look at that, it's already there. We'll refresh it just to make sure. But let's take a look. And we have, uh, we have all of the different things that you said. Uh, Dallas and Boston and Charlotte and San Diego, Seattle, Tulsa. Uh, and this is really nice. Now, what I've done here in this step is I just made one change where I added in a field to give us the route, uh, which is just a calculation to say our, our origin to destination. So just concatenating some strings there. Uh, and then, then we've got our states, so that's all looking really good. And then, if I want to draw a map that shows a path from one city to another in Tableau, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pivot that data because I don't want uh, my origin and destination in the same row. I'm going to need them in separate rows. I'm going to need an origin row and then a destination row because Tableau will draw a mark for each one of those rows and then I can connect it with a line. So I'm going to have to pivot. So that's my next step here. Notice I did another coordinated pivot to pivot on city and state. So with my destination and origins. Then I have a, uh, a data set here that just has the latitude and longitude for a bunch of different cities. Let's just make sure that uh, all the cities we said today that we found matches. Look at that, I am shocked. But we, f we found a match for everything uh, that we said today. Now you'll notice the, uh, the geocoding data set has a lot of cities that didn't find matches, but that's fine. You could have said any of these. It's possible we might have found Washington, D.C. I could have. Oh, in fact, let's go back. All right, we'll save it. And let's refresh. And we'll come back to our lookup. Did we get it? No. Did we? 
Did I say, oh, maybe I missed say, uh, save, refresh, there it is, and we have it. All right, so yeah, sorry, I shouldn't have left it out. All right, so it, it found it just fine. Again, I could fix anything here if it didn't exactly match. Uh, and then I'm gonna clean up just a bit. I'm gonna remove some of the columns from that, from that join. And then I have my Superstore sales. Uh, and I'm gonna do a couple of things here. So in my Superstore sales, I have uh, a record for every sale of every item uh, that, that is ever sold. But all I really want is just to sum that up. Uh, per city, state, and region. So for, for every city, state, and region, I'm gonna take a sum of sales just so I have a record for every city. Because then I can join that with, with our data set here. And uh, I'll join it on state and city uh, just to make sure that, uh, that it's unique uh, for everything. And uh, what I should end up then is having uh, an additional column uh, for my city and state. In fact, I'll just add a, a, a branch here just so we can take a look at it. But given our city and state, we should then have a sum of sales uh, added there. So notice in Tableau Prep, you can add branches and do all kinds of fun things in your flow. And now we come to this triangle, which is a really interesting thing. What am I doing here? So what I'm doing here is, first of all, I took the, uh, the max sales per region. I wanted to know which city in the region has the max sales. So I have to figure out, first of all, uh, given, given each region, what was the maximum value there? And then I took this and joined it back to the previous step on region. So how many of you have used a, an LOD, a level of detail calculation in Tableau? That's what I'm doing here in Tableau Prep. So in Tableau, I would do a fixed level of detail calculation to say fixed per region max sales, and then find out where that equals. Uh, and so that's what I'm doing here is, is I'm doing that, that uh, fixed level of detail, then where that equals on, on the region. Uh, that will be my maximum, and that, that uh, where it's equal is my highest sales city. So notice there I've got a calculation to say what's my highest sales city. That's where the sales equals the max sales per region. And finally, we'll flow through to an output, and I will run that flow. We'll replace the CSV and I will go to my final viz here. And we have every city that you guys mentioned with a star on the one that has the most sales in that region. All right. We have just a few minutes for just a couple of questions. Any, any questions or, uh, or comments? Yes. So yeah, that's a good point. So if you're adding new columns and then you want to do the pivot, you're going to have to go back in the prep and, uh, and adjust for that. So good, good question. Yes. Oh, what am I looking forward to most? Yeah, no, the, the scheduling is going to be great. The, uh, the R and the Python is going to be great. I'm excited to see those. Uh, I'd love to see some, some table calculations that, uh, that would be in there. All right, so as you're, uh, as you're leaving, thank you very much. Uh, please fill out the survey, and uh, dragons love it. When you, uh, when you give them high ratings. <laughs> and thank you so much for coming. <laughs>